हेलो स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू ऑल आर इन द बेस्ट स्टेट ऑफ योर प्रिपरेशन फॉर द लास्ट लैप ऑफ दिस एग्जामिनेशन सो आई एम स्टार्टिंग द डिस्कशन ऑन द इम्पॉर्टेंट इश्यूज ऑफ इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस द फर्स्ट इश्यू दैट आई हैव पिकड अप इज द इरानियन न्यूक्लियर इश्यू not only iran's nuclear issue is in news there are some other interlinked news for example uh, india will be making certain mount commitments to chabahar port uh, there has been a news for uh, china and uh, iran strategic partnership as well as vienna conference so from the perspective of interview you should uh, be having some linkages and understanding of these developments in mind uh, i have gone through the transcripts of the previous years interview and uh, i found lot of questions on india and iran one very prominent question related to the current development of the year was the killing of general sulemani and explain in context of international law so there were other questions also keeping in this i have prepared this particular presentation on india and iran relations so if you talk in current terms when you talk about current terms three four things related to iran is in news the most uh, viral news you can say is where israel attacking iran's nuclear facility before that inauguration or before that the celebration of iran's nuclear day then there was a vienna conference on resumption of the deal out of which uh, us president uh the then us president trump had come out and the other things is like saudi arabia iran wars in yemen next attacks on each others oil facilities israel attack on iranian uh, new uh, iranian ships also and india some of india's gestures something related to afghanistan so these are the current developments which you should be aware of as expected in interview because it is mentioned in the guidelines that a candidate should be aware of the current affairs and uh, how putting all these things in the perspective what knowledge you need to brush up on india and iran relations first of all you have to understand the importance of iran so you know where iran is located iran is located in the middle east or west asia you know the importance of west asia for international politics the importance of west asia is clear in international politics in the sense that we have seen that west asia's history is filled with crisis and the involvement of the major powers again and again and uh, since i remember i have never seen the west asia and the people there living in peace stability and security so since west asia because of its oil and gas because of its strategic location is always one of the core area of international politics and in west asia obviously iran is going to be in limelight because of iran's strategic location you must be knowing the importance of persian gulf and the caspian sea both first from the perspective of oil caspian sea is a landlocked sea so persian gulf and the caspian sea has one of the largest resources of oil and gas and in addition the persian gulf 
also is the major trade route and you also know that us aims to establish or us means to uh, aims to preserve its hegemony and for that one of the objective of us foreign policy has been to control the major trade rules or the control of the oceans now you must understand what is the importance of iran for india and what india wants in iran the importance of iran for india goes beyond energy iran is one of the leading regional power in the middle east iran is the leading nation of the muslim world technologically advanced now iran is a country of the shias and india also has the second largest population of the shias besides the most important thing is iran is important for india's interests in afghanistan and central asia you understand the centrality of iran's location it is because of the centrality of iran's location that geopolitical scholars have termed iran as the center of the universe here the universe means the universe of international politics if we talk about the modern history of iran iran has also suffered from colonialism like all other countries in the third world direct or indirect iran has also experienced a phase of uh, democracy when the democratic government came to iran the us and britain they have engineered a coup and they have ended the democratic phase of iran and have installed the government of mohammad raza shah pehlvi mohammad raza shah pehlvi's coming to power in iran is often called as white revolution because he started the modernization and the westernization of iranian society now modernization and westernization of iranian society has resulted into the clerics in iran going against the regime of mohammad raza shah pehlvi now the two opponents of the monarchy one was the democrats and the second was the islamic clerics they combined together which resulted into the green revolution and the islamic revolution in iran islamic revolution in iran is a game changing event since then we see iran and us is continuously in the tensions because first of all when raza shah pehlvi was there it has given an opportunity to us to exploit the resources of iran now democrats coming to power obviously they will go for the nationalization of oil and gas and as you understand that us foreign policy is to large extent guided by the interest of its capitalist class the nationalization of oil and gas is bound to create tensions between iran and usa again iran wanted to delegitimize the rule of raza shah pehlvi and hence iran would have to present itself as the protector of islam and somebody which can challenge the western cultural imperialism so iranian effort to establish itself as the leader of the islamic world further created the possibility of the clash of civilizations between the west and the iran this is what we are seeing since from the very beginning in 1979 iranian revolution time and again in order to establish itself as the leader of the islamic world and as a challenger of the western imperialism iran has involved itself in the arab palestinian issue also 
the involvement of Iran also goes beyond the direct and the diplomatic involvement. It also goes for promoting the proxy wars in the region and Iran has been accused of supporting the militant organizations like Hezbollah and Hamas. Till date, Iran has not recognized Israel and Iran aims to annihilate Israel, the symbol of American imperialism and the cultural imperialism. Hence, we see there is an eternal rivalry between the Iran and Israel and we see that even at present, Israel would attempt to sabotage not just Iran's nuclear facilities, but also Iranian and any nuclear, any engagement between the Iran and USA. Another thing is, since Iran adopted democracy, which is ideally not a democracy, but a guided democracy, and to which US often addresses as totalitarianism, we see the deterioration of the relations between Iran and Saudi Arabia, considering the fact that the monarchy in Saudi Arabia fears that in case there is a democracy in Iran, there is a possibility of a democratic revolution in Saudi Arabia also. We have consistently seen Saudi Arabia and Iran involved in the proxy wars and the latest being in Yemen where lot number of people have lost their lives. Besides, Iran attacking Saudi Arabia's nuclear facilities, Saudi Arabia again uh, attacking Iran's ships and so on. The geopolitical scenario of the Middle East has started changing in a big way after the Abraham Accord. The Abraham Accord recently concluded during the time of the Trump regime has resulted into the wider recognition and engagement of the Gulf countries with Israel. Thus, the two enemies of Iran coming together. The Abraham Accord has further ensured or made the situation, the geopolitical situation in the region further polarized. Hence, what we see today is that Iran is at the center of the politics there. In 2015, US President Obama has entered into a nuclear deal with Iran along with the other countries. The aim was to stop the nuclear uh, weapon program of Iran or nuclear enrichment program of Iran and in return release some sanctions of against Iran. However, releasing of the sanctions against Iran has created an impression among certain sections in USA and elsewhere that this has strengthened Iran's position. Saudi Arabia and Israel have never been comfortable with the deal and they have been consistently pressurized the Trump administration to come out of the deal. Trump administration came out of the deal calling it one of the worst deal ever. Trump administration's position was not supported by the European Union and other members of the deal. Hence, the deal has continued, but Iran was not following the deal and US has been out of the deal. As Joe Biden administration wanted to deal with the nuclear issue of Iran to ensure the safety and security of its allies like Israel and Saudi Arabia, they have decided to re-engage Iran and to reformulate the deal and for that a conference has taken place in Siena, in Vienna where uh, Iran and US they have not met directly and uh, there has been an indirect negotiation and as per the newspapers there has been some sort of uh, end of the impasse and the possibility of the nuclear talks. As the possibility of nuclear talks emerges, which makes Israel more insecure, we see Israel's attempt at the sabotage. 
Israel's policy attacking the nuclear facility aims first as the preemptive attack because they do not want Iran to develop a capacity to have their own nuclear weapons. The second thing is Iran, obviously when Israel will attack Iran, Iran will show greater determination for uranium enrichment and it will be difficult for US and Iran to continue the negotiations. Hence, a complex strategic scenario is developing. Now, what we see from India's perspective, Iran appears to be a very important player. Besides this, Iran is important for India's strategic interests in Afghanistan. Hence, it is essential for India to stay engaged with Iran. Dealing with Iran has not been easy because of the US pressure and the complexity of the situations and the multidimensional interests of India. India's interest in West Asia go beyond Iran. We do have a lot of interest in the Gulf as well as with Israel. Hence, if I have to define India's Iran policy, I can say that India has been continuously engaged in the balancing act. Now, earlier India had to balance between Israel, US and Saudi Arabia. Now, once China has entered into the strategic partnership with Iran, we have also to take into account the China and the Pakistan factor. Now, what is the bottom line? What should be India's approach in managing the Iranian situation? The bottom line you should remember is that India should have a calibrated engagement with Iran. Now, this was the brief of the presentation and I will show through some PPTs the important points of the presentation. Hopefully, this discussion will help you in your interview preparations. So, India and Iran relations. Why Iran in news? You have to keep three things in mind. The sabotage of Iran's nuclear facility, the Vienna talks and the strategic partnership agreement. Iran, you, I have told you the centrality of the Iran. Iran is called by Graham Filler as the center of universe. Iran is called by Camp and Harkavi as the strategic energy ellipse. Ellipse means something which is situated between two focal points. Iran is also called as the world's worst, first superpower by Robert D. Kaplan. Now, the strategic importance of Iran located at the crucial junction of South Asia, West Asia, Central Asia and Caucasus. Profile of Iran's second largest proven grass reserves after Russia with 33.6 trillion cubic meters. Third largest natural gas production after Indonesia and Russia and fourth in oil reserves. Location, Persian Gulf, the heart of the Middle East and the largest source of oil along with the trading routes and second is the Caspian Sea which is also another major source of oil and gas. So obviously there has to be a politics. You should also be aware of some major milestones of Iranian history. In 1953, the democratic government was overthrown in a coup engineered by the British and US intelligence services. Mohammad Reza Shah Pehlvi returns from exile. You can see Muhammad Reza Shah Pehlvi. In 1979, the Islamic revolution in Iran and Ayatollah Khomeini, he became the supreme leader. In 1995, US imposed started that sanctions against Iran for sponsoring terrorism, nuclear arms and hostility to Israel. In 2002, George Bush declared Iran as axis of evil along with Iraq and North Korea. And from 2009 onwards, we see that Iran's nuclear program and missile program has started capturing the attention of the international community. Uh, before that, there has been the first ever cyber attack on the nuclear facility by Iran, uh, by Israel and US, known as Stuxnet. 
this is another important event 2015 JCPOA which limits Iran's nuclear activity and lift the economic sanctions 2018 Trump has come out of it as the tensions are deepening because of the situation in Syria we also see US President Trump going for maximum pressure policy killing German uh, General Soleimani of Iraq's Quds Force, Q-U-D-S. Quds Force are the special forces of the uh, Iran's Revolutionary Guards. In 2021, we see the Vienna Conference. This is the recent news that uh, uh, Israel has attacked Iran's nuclear facility at Natanz and Iran and Israel rivalry, I have told you the reason, the reason being Iran wants to project itself as the leader of the Muslim world and Israel in the Middle East is like the outpost of US and Iran's Israel policy is annihilation of Israel and that is why Israel becomes concerned and go for the preemptive attacks. Now the Vienna talks, the members of the Vienna talk are P5 countries, though there has been no direct talk between Iran and US and Germany. It was under the leadership of European Union. You should also be aware of the nature and the scope of the Iran-China strategic partnership agreement. It is $400 billion deal. It is for 25 years. It has a huge scope, massive projects, 100 projects in nuclear, oil and infrastructure development. So what has been, if in interview they ask what has been uh, USA's or Trump's policy, it is often called as maximum pressure policy. Now Biden returning to Iran's nuclear deal is essential for Biden's foreign policy which they have already started because he wants to end the wars in the Middle East and the start of you can say uh, this Asia because of the rising China Biden has to also continue with the pivot to Asia policy and hence pivot to Asia policy also means coming out of the Middle East but it will not be that easy because Saudi Arabia and Israel can act as a spoiler and the recent time their tensions have increased a lot. So Saudi attacking Iran, uh, Iran attacking Saudi oil uh, facilities, see the situation of uh, one of the worst uh, consequences of their rivalry is in Yemen, many innocent children, they have lost their life. And now what points you have to understand from India and Iran relations. <clears throat> Recently the relations have deteriorated especially since 2005 when India voted against Iran at IAEA and India in the past few years have become very very close to US to the extent there has been a question mark whether India continues to follow the strategic autonomy or not. In recent years, Iran has expressed its huge dissatisfaction and has condemned the violence against the minorities in India, India's decision related to Article 370 and Iran has also cancelled India's participation in Farzad B gas pipeline and we see that IPI pipeline seems to have no future and Iran has been uh, greater or more consistent in its support to Pakistan over Kashmir and as China Pakistan axis is developing and China Iran axis is developing so there emerges a triangle known as Iran China and Pakistan triangle which is a cause of concern but something in news as the Biden administration has created some sort of an environment where we will be there is a possibility of ending the sanctions against the Iran, the withdrawal of the US forces from Afghanistan again increases the importance of Iran for India. So we see some of the acts which India has taken, India to resume buying oil from Iran once US sanctions are eases, then India plans expansion of Chabahar 
Chabahar port linking it with North South Trans Port Corridor. Now one phrase bottom line for India what India needs is have a finally calibrated approach fine continue the balancing act and India learns how to finally calibrate the approach there is no need to compete with China rather increase the areas of Iran India engagement so that the relationship does not get disrupted if India has to stop purchasing oil from Iran so more areas of engagement there is a more ability or there will be more room to maneuver and we should remember this quote by our Prime Minister in 2016 when he said that once we make up our mind the distance between Kashi and Kashan is only half a step. So I hope this discussion has helped you and of course we will be uh, discussing more between India and Iran on the question and answer session. Thank you.